and then we're gonna be swatting 300. Are you ready? We said this last time, and I've been thinking about it a lot since then. It's just a minute of pain. One minute, you know? In this case, a couple more minutes. 20 seconds. We can push through that, right? We can work our way through that, get the work done, and excel. Two of you. Okay, here we go. Good morning. Welcome back. Good to see you again. Bright and early today. My goodness. I am uh, I am tired today. I'm not gonna lie. I am pretty, pretty tired. Didn't sleep very well. Uh, I'm not sure why. I, honestly, I'm not entirely certain why that is, but it just didn't feel like I got some good sleep. Not like I was waking up a bunch or couldn't fall asleep. I just didn't get, didn't get very good sleep. But today, nonetheless, we've got a good, good, good and tough leg workout ahead of us again. We're gonna be doing our dynamic box squats again. And this week, we're not just doing 10 sets here. We're doing 15 sets of two. We're going up. I know, it's a little nuts. It is a little nuts, but it's, uh, it's effective, trust me. Now, as you can see from today's workout, we're gonna be increasing the total amount of sets that we do on these box squats. Still doing them just with the two reps, still doing the very low rest periods, and we're keeping the weight the same as well. We're gonna be doing about 55% of that one rep max. So for us, we're gonna be doing 300 pounds again. But this week, instead of the leg press, we're gonna be doing the belt squats. I wasn't as happy with my first leg day last week as I was with my second leg day. The second leg day, I really felt like I walked away barely. Like, I mean, quite literally, I could barely walk after our second leg day last week. But with the first one, which is the one we're repeating today, I really didn't feel like my quads got enough punishment, <laughs> to be totally honest. I want that to be more of a quad dominant, quad focused exercise that we do in that slot. And I think the belt squats, at least in my home gym, a little bit better equipped to handle that. So we're gonna set up the belt squat today. We're gonna be able to take a, 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 a narrow stance just like we can on the leg press, but really truly dominate the quads in a way that I just haven't been able to in the home gym with our leg press setup. So we'll see, not entirely sure where the weight's gonna land. We're still gonna be shooting for that RPE eight. And then the rest of the workout's really gonna be uh, mostly the same stuff. Some small changes here and there, nothing too crazy. So let's stop talking about it. Let's get right into it. Let's get set up here for some leg curls, get warmed up and make sure everything feels good. And then get set up over here for some barbell squats. I'll see you over there. Okay, all set up here for our uh, working set on our hamstring curl. Same as last week, one big set. We're gonna do three you know, variations within that one set, but we're gonna do one set here at our working weight. We're gonna drop the weight immediately by 10 to 15 pounds, and then we're gonna do a couple more reps, and, we're gonna, and then we're just gonna finish it out with some partials, 15 partials there at the end. Let's get after it. Come on, partials. Come on. Oh, we gotta reduce that down even more. It's all right. We're gonna finish this out. 
Go squat. amazing how like with the squat I find especially you realize how much more of your body actually needs to warm up before you get something done with the squat you got to make sure your shoulders are warmed up people can get their wrists all torn up sometimes I've never had to suffer from that but some people have really bad wrist flexion when it comes to the squat elbows um, feeling the elbow today which is kind of odd but it happens it's getting there but the squat as much as we don't like to say is a full body exercise in some ways it is in some ways it really is. All right, this is gonna be our last warm up set here, 275. Uh, we're using the seated chair this week. I like that the feet in the front are just one single post, so my legs aren't gonna be you know, interfering with it, getting in the way, I'm not having to look where I'm placing my feet to make sure they're the right width or anything like that. I can just squat at the width that I wanna be squatting at. Not have to worry about the feet at all, and we just sit down in this chair. Nice and firm, good and supported. It's working out well. Okay, let's do our last warm up here. And then we're going to be swatting 300. Are you ready? Oh, okay. And that one woke up too. <laughs> Let's do this. <clears throat> Let's get this underway. 15 total sets, sets of two reps of these box squats. And we've got our timer set here for 30 second breaks. That's all we're doing in between each of these. Uh, make sure you got your notebook, keep track of these, you're gonna lose count, I guarantee it. Some people use chalk on the rack, whatever you need to do. I was traveling one time and I had a guy, I'm not kidding, he grabbed every single two and a half pound plate in the gym and he would use those to count as sets. The dude would do like 20 to 30 sets of different exercises. Guy was, uh, he was kind of an idiot. Kind of an asshole too, as he took literally all the two and a half pound plates in the whole gym. Okay, 15 sets. This is uh, five more than last week. This is gonna be tough. We got this, come on. seconds. Both of you. My goodness. Two of you. Okay. Here we go. Five seconds. about last week 30 second rests you don't want to be extending those rests we want to be taxing our cardiovascular system a little bit really pushing it just a little bit cranking out these reps and when we get down on the seat or pausing for just a second letting that momentum completely fade away so you don't have anything to use to our advantage here Oh, 
Coming up on halfway here. Whew, almost. And we're feeling it, that's for damn sure. <sighs> we said this last time, and I've been thinking about it a lot since then. It's just a minute of pain. One minute, you know? In this case, a couple more minutes. We can push through that, right? We can work our way through that, get the work done, and excel. But we gotta fight through it. It's temporary. There are so many things in life that aren't as temporary. And we push through them. We can push through this. sit around wondering how temporary something's gonna be. There's so many things that we want to just be over, to get through, to find that greener grass, those better pastures, better moments. But it's true as well, that you don't realize when you're in the good times, you really don't. So we can be hoping and wishing and praying for those, but we've also gotta to try to be a little bit more present and aware, and in the moment, to better remember them when we're not in the better times, when we're not in the good days. And they will come. You will get through those trying times. The saying it doesn't last forever. It can be a blessing and a curse. And when you're in those bad times, it's the last thing you wanna hear is someone tell you it gets better. This won't last forever. It's so frustrating to hear that over and over and over, but it will move on. It will get better. You will persevere. The gym can teach you that. Do not forget. Come on. Just gotta be patient. We've gotta be kind to ourselves in the meantime. That could be the hardest part. Is giving ourselves the grace, the bandwidth, the forgiveness to feel what we feel, to make the mistakes we do, and to keep pushing forward even as we continue to make mistakes, even as we continue to dread what might be in front of us day to day, hour to hour, week to week. You have a lot to complain about for a doggy with no worries. Come on, BJ. We got two left. Come on. We're gonna do this. We can do this. Yeah. Come on. Oh my goodness. This last one's gonna be. It's gonna be brutal. We can do it. Come on. This is it. Come on, last one. Yeah, come on, one more. Yeah. Uh. 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 All right, we got 300 keyed up here. Going for 12 reps. Let's see if we can do it, huh? Let's see if we can do it. It's not gonna be easy, but it should be doable. 
We've done weights like this before, but we'll see if we're able to do it today after all those squats. My goodness, were those tough. Whew, here we go. Estimated a little bit there. All right, that was a <laughs> bit of an overestimation on our abilities there, huh? <sighs> so we reduced the weight down by 30 total pounds. I think that'll make this a little more manageable. Good two and a half minute rest here. <sighs> We're gonna do it. We're gonna crush it. I noticed in my last one, I was a little bit, a little bit behind where I wanted to be actually. So moved up a bit, and I was able to get perfectly over this this belt here. Second set, last set of this here. Come on, we're gonna get all 12 reps this time. Let's do it. Terrible sound you're hearing. It's the uh, metal piece that keeps it's supposed to keep this floating ball up here. It's stuck, and this cable would strip the uh, vinyl off of it. Oh well. The weight was a little low, I think, for that second one, but also this thing was stopping our getting full depth there. But we'll take what we can. Next week we'll probably come up a little bit on that weight, but this is good. <sighs> okay, we're doing uh, hyper extensions today in place of good mornings. Those were pretty tough last week. I felt very inflexible with those and I'd like to work on it, but I'd like to also get my volume in here. Number two. Ooh. Feeling that. That lower back, man, that posterior chain is fired up. I feel strong though, man, I feel strong. That's awesome. Number three. Time for our legs and calves. Legs and calves. Our at time for our abs and calves now. Let's do this little superset here. Good. You know, I didn't do a an arm day yesterday like I had intended. This is an ex, extra day. My split at the moment has me working out five days a week, which is not six. I prefer doing six, honestly. Just I just enjoy it. And uh, I think it was a bit of a mistake. You know, not let's not call it a mistake. 
nothing bad happened, nothing bad's gonna happen. But I feel like I should have done it. I, I think I could have done it, no problem. Um, I didn't need two days off from lifting. Still did cardio, but that's still on the up from you know being sick, kind of getting back up to those levels again as well. Everything's feeling great though. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna add that sixth day in here on my weekends again. I enjoy those weekend workouts. I don't really have as much of a time constraint as I normally do during the week. And I've got a pretty long leash during the week. And by that, I mean, I've got, you know, a good hour and a half, two hours to get my workout in. Yeah, maybe not two hours, maybe about an hour and a half, but still it's nice to on the weekends really not have to worry about the time nearly as much and, uh, and just get, uh, get in what I want to get in. So I'm thinking on the weekends, I'm going to start incorporating in an arm day. And then also maybe a big focus on grip strength training. I've needed a place to do that. Maybe this is the time to do it. Good man, feeling really good. I love doing ab work after doing a heavy leg day or any kind of really lower back focused stuff in general. A year, years ago now I read some advice from somebody online who was, it was more anecdotal than anything, but it was just, hey, like, why don't you give us a shot? And I was having such a hard time on my, my back days. And I was having such a hard time on my leg days with squats and deadlifts. I would, I would get such a bad lower back pump. And I really tried so many different things. Well, one of those things though, was incorporating some light ab work in between my various leg exercises. So if I feel my lower back getting too big of a pump during my sets, I'll do a little bit of ab work. And the thought is that it helps draw some of that blood away from your lower back into your abs, literally just on the other side of your body. Now, in theory, could you replicate that with like any exercise? Potentially, but you know, call it bro science, but the thought of literally just taking that blood from the lower back into your core, you know, moving it from one side to the other, I don't know, something about it rang true with me and I still do it. And it seems to work when I need it to, but supplementing taurine and about 500 milligrams of potassium before leg day has really helped immensely. Abs. Okay, last one here. I'm gonna wrap up, get inside, get in the shower, daydream about some grip strength training implements I could possibly make. I'd love to get a set of farmer farmer's handles. Heavy duty ones, you know. I don't want to get bumper plates for them though, so I'd love to find some that are made of wood and uh, not have to worry about dropping those things. We'll see, but I do think I'm gonna do that. Arm days on the weekends um, with some grip strength training, it's gonna be a perfect time to do that. Maybe incorporate some cardio into it, you know, a bit of like a hit style workout. I've been interested. I've been seeing some uh, pictures of these ropeless jump ropes that are kind of neat. Um, I don't need one when I'm outside here, but because I've got the clearance for it, but like inside or if I was, you know, in the basement doing my cardio, I'd love to be able to do some jump rope because that is, oh, you like jump rope too? Jump rope is one of the best ways to get that heart rate up. And I love using it as my like, a uh, high intensity interval uh, portion of whenever I'm doing cardio like that. All right, we've got some really impatient boys here. So I'm gonna crack out this last set of calf raises here, get these guys inside, and we're gonna go eat, drink our coffees, shower, all that good stuff. Thanks for being here. Ugh. I'll see you guys next time. Oh.